in order for us to really understand Russia's military support for the rebels and its annexation of Crimea, we need to go as far back as at least the 2011 NATO-led Libya, uh, Libya intervention. It is as much about Ukraine and regional security as it is about a, a continually escalated threat construction of the West by Russia. So Russia has seen Western foreign policy, and by that I mean European Union and NATO and United States foreign, uh, NATO actions and United States foreign policy, as continuously threatening, going back to the 90s, but certainly we can trace it as far back as the Libya intervention, which is when uh, Obama's uh, popular or now infamous initiative of the reset between the United States and Russia uh, arguably failed in 2011. So even though Russia, by abstaining on the United Nations Security Council resolution, uh, authorizing intervention in Libya, Russia essentially, through its abstention, allowed the intervention. The way that the intervention was implemented was so criticized by Russia and was seen as such a pretext for regime change that it fed into a pattern of what Russia sees as West-supported interventions in another state uh, under the veil of humanitarianism for the purpose of removing West-unfriendly regimes and replacing them with West-friendly ones. Now, this is not a novel argument in debates on Russian foreign policy. What I add to this is the evidence that this, that in Russia's imagination, this Western strategy of intervention uh, or uh, using intervention for regime change could be used against Russia. So the argument that if the West intervenes in Libya, then in Syria, then, and by intervention is uh, what, what is meant is the broader idea of interference, the Mishatinstva, uh, non-interference, uh, and interference of Mishatis, but that is interfering through military means, but also interfering in other states by simply articulating support for opposition groups, that is peaceful intervention. And all of this is seen as Western hybrid war strategy that could be used against Russia one day to destabilize Russia and to remove and replace the, the regime. When the West intervenes in, in Libya, the way that the intervention was implemented in Libya, when the West intervenes in Syria, when it supports the protests in Ukraine, when it did support the protests in, in Ukraine in 2014, this was all seen as part of a strategy that one day could be used against Russia. So Russia's actions in, in Ukraine uh, Russia's actions in Syria are as much about regional security as they are about deterring the West and as they are about Russia's domestic security. Russia's foreign policy is, um, is as much about controlling regions as it is about preserving domestic stability and preserving the survival of the regime. The logic is if we don't do anything about it now to stop the West, we're going to be next. And especially with Ukraine, the sort of threat image of the West, removing regimes in the Middle East and approaching Russia's borders, um, made it possible for the threat image of the, of the West in Russia's Im imagination to increase and to continue escalating steadily since 2011 to the point where uh, Russia's military involvement in Ukraine was seen as necessary uh, and it was, I mean once again, it was as much about Ukraine as it was about Putin's own survival and Russia's own domestic stability.